this thing is still slow. You know, today I'm going to show you five more free tips to speed up a Windows 10 PC. Stay tuned. In our last video, I gave you five free tips for speeding up a Windows computer. However, they were pretty basic tips, you know, they didn't really require too much advanced knowledge of your computer. However, today, I'm going to give you five more free tips to speed up a Windows computer. However, these tips are going to be a little bit more advanced. And wait until the end because I'm going to have a bonus tip for you. So if this kind of content interests you, then please hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. Now, let's see what we can do about speeding this computer up. So the first setting that we're going to change is going to be our power settings for Windows. And this is really simple to do. So let me show you how. So what you're going to want to do is right click anywhere on your desktop that there isn't an icon. So any free area on your desktop, you're going to go ahead and right click and you're going to click on display settings. And then from the display settings, you want to click on power and sleep from the left hand menu here. And then from here, you want to go to additional power settings right to the right. And then from there, it should give you your list of power plans. Now, in this case, I only have a balance plan. You should have a high performance plan here, and this will actually be the plan that we're trying to select. But since we don't have it, what we want to do is hit on create a power plan and we want to click high performance and we can name this any anything that we want. I'm just going to go make me faster and then hit next. And then here you can actually adjust how your computer functions during whatever circumstance, whether it's on battery or plugged in, depending on when you flip the display down or when you can put the computer to sleep. So we're going to go ahead and hit create. And now we have a make me faster. Like I said, this should normally be a high performance plan. So by doing this, what the computer's doing is it's actually changing certain aspects of how Windows allows the computer to run. It will allow the processor clocks to go higher. It will allow the computer to use more resources at, at a time. However, it will affect your battery life. So if you're doing this on a notebook that happens to have a bad battery in it, then you might actually suffer from having less battery life on your computer due to this setting. So you might want to keep that in mind when you're playing around with power settings on your computer. Now, the next tip that I'm going to give you is one that is free to check, but it's not necessarily free to fix. And that's checking the actual health of the hard drive on your computer. If your hard drive is failing, then there's nothing you're gonna be able to do to speed your computer up. So to do this, I use a program called Crystal Disk Info. Let me show you how to get it and run it on your computer. So what I want you to do now is go ahead and open up your browser. I'm gonna open Chrome here, and we wanna search for Crystal disk info and then from here we're going to go to their download page and then from here i would recommend just downloading the standard version here and it should automatically start downloading for you and once it's downloaded we're going to go ahead and open up the folder And then here's the program here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. And I'm going to highlight everything inside of this zip file and copy it over to that folder. All right, now that it's copied over, we're going to open that folder up and we're going to go ahead and run the program. So you're going to click on disk info 64 right here. This program also comes with a 32 bit version, but honestly, it, most windows should be running 64 at this point. So run the 64 bit version. We're going to hit yes. 
And there we go. According to this, my hard drive is in good shape and I don't have any errors on this thing. However, now right here, the health status where it says good, as long as it says good, then you're fine. However, if there's any errors in the smart data on your hard drive, it's gonna say either warning or bad. Now, if it says warning or bad, I would recommend replacing your hard drive immediately because your hard drive could literally fail at any moment and that's definitely where your performance problem is coming from. If you do, end up changing your hard drive, I highly recommend upgrading to an SSD. An SSD is gonna give you the best bang for the buck when it comes to performance, and especially in Windows 10. SSDs are really cheap nowadays, and honestly, it's not worth not using one. I did a video a while back where I go through the entire process of upgrading a computer to an SSD. I'll go ahead and tag that video here so you can watch it at your convenience. The next thing we're gonna look at is your system's memory. Honestly, if you have a problem with the memory on your computer, it could definitely be causing performance issues. Honestly, it's probably causing a lot of instability, which in turn will lead to performance issues. My go-to program to test memory on a computer is Memtest86. Let me show you how to download it and install it on a thumb drive. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is go ahead and click on your browser, and we're gonna search for memtest86 and then from there we're going to want to click on download and then we want to click on down test download memtest86 free so we click on that and it should download the usb version of it and it should just take a second to download and once it's done we're going to go ahead and open it into a folder and just like before what i want you to do now is go ahead and right click on your desktop create a new folder, and we wanna extract all of these files into that new folder. So we're gonna do it just like this. Okay, so now what you're gonna need for this is a USB thumb drive. You know, these things right here are really cheap nowadays, and you should have an extra one laying around anyway. So I would definitely pick yourself up a bunch of these things so that when you need them, you'll have them. So you wanna take your drive and go ahead and plug it into your computer, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and run this executable right here. And then once we run that, it's gonna come up, it's gonna detect the thumb drive that we just plugged in. We're gonna go ahead and check that. And then we're gonna to wanna to push the right button down at the bottom right here. So once we push right, it's just gonna give you a warning that it's gonna write this to the drive. Make sure that this drive doesn't have any important information on it before you write to this drive because this will destroy the data that's on the drive. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes. And it's gonna give you a final warning. It really wants you to know that you need to make sure there's nothing important on this drive before you start. So we're gonna go ahead and hit yes, and then it's gonna write everything that it needs to to the drive. So it's gonna take a minute to write this image to the USB drive. So in the meantime, what you're gonna to need to do is once it finishes writing, you're gonna to need to boot your computer off of this thumb drive. Now, different computers actually boot up in different ways, so you may have a hotkey that you need to push. On my HP that I'm using right now, you just hit the escape key while you're booting up. If you're using a Dell computer, you can hit F12 in order to get your boot menu, but different computers have different ways of starting up off of a USB. I'm gonna show you a way to be able to do that from within Windows to make it a little bit easier so it's a little more uniform so you don't necessarily have to know the startup key on your specific computer. However, if you're using this on a computer that's disabled or won't start Windows, you're gonna to need to know what that shortcut key is in order to boot off of a USB drive. So I would recommend going to the manufacturer's website in order to find that information out. All right, once the image is complete, you can go ahead and hit OK, and you can go ahead and close this program now. So what we're gonna wanna do now is we want to go down to the Start menu here and click on Settings. And from the Settings menu, we wanna go to Update and Security. And from here, we wanna click on Recovery. And then from Recovery, we wanna click on Advanced Startup. Now by clicking this button, it's actually gonna restart your computer. All right, so it gives us this screen right here. So what we're gonna wanna do is it gives us the option to use a device to boot up, and that's exactly what we want. So we wanna go ahead and click on use a device, and it's gonna ask you which device you wanna use. So we're gonna click on EFI USB device. Now Memtest should take over from there and it should go ahead and scan the memory in your computer for errors. Now if you come up with any errors at all, 
The first thing that I would try is to shut the computer down and reseat your memory modules. Basically, all you do is you pull the memory modules out and you reseat them back into the computer in order to hopefully improve the connection. And then go ahead and run this again and see if you still get those errors. If you do continue to receive errors, then the next thing I would try doing is pulling all of your memory modules out except for just one and then go ahead and run the program again. If you continue to receive errors, then pull that single module out and replace it with one of your other ones and then continue to repeat the test to see if you have just one memory module that's bad or if several are bad. Another thing that could be slowing your computer down is if your hard drive is running out of space. The less space Windows has on a hard drive, the less space it has for your swap file and other system functions that it needs to do. So you really should have free space on your hard drive in order to allow Windows to kind of stretch its legs. So let me show you how to check to see if your hard drive is filling up. So what you want to do is go down and click on your file explorer. From here, you want to go ahead and click on this PC. And then from here, you want to look at your local C drive. And as you can see on this one, I am nowhere near full. I've got a lot of free space on this drive. If your C drive is filling up, sometimes it's kind of difficult to figure out it, what it's filling up with. So I have a neat little program that I use to be able to determine this. Let me show you where to get it. So what you want to do is click on your browser and you want to search here for a program called tree size free. And then from here, you want to go ahead and click on this link here for jam software and then click on free download. And it should give you a couple of different options right here. So this one here is with an installer. Honestly, I typically don't download the installer. I actually use the portable version. However, you can download either one that you want here. So I'm going to download the portable one here and go ahead and hit download. All right, so once it's downloaded, we're going to go ahead and click on show in folder. And then from here, we're going to go ahead and open the zip file. And then I'm going to just open this program straight from the zip file here. We're going to go ahead and hit run. And here we go. Now that we have the program open, we want to click on select directory. So for this one, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this PC. And then from within this PC, we want to select our C drive because that's the drive we want to have it scan. And then it's going to ask you if you want to restart the program as administrator. I would highly recommend doing this. So go ahead and hit yes. And it's actually going to restart the program as the administrator. And then it's going to continue scanning the drive like it was before. And this is going to actually go through and scan all the different folders and directories. Using these principles, you should be able to find out where the largest files are on your computer that are causing it to take up all your space. Now, I said that these five tips were all going to be more advanced than the last ones. And well, they all were except for this last one. This last one may seem extremely simple. However, the differences that it can make to performance are actually kind of substantial in some ways. And that's honestly just restarting your computer. You know, Windows 10 uses a function called a hybrid shutdown. So when you shut your computer down every day, you're not actually shutting it down. Instead, you're actually kind of hibernating it. So when it comes back, it boots up faster. Microsoft uses this as a way to make Windows seem snappier doing, during boot up. So to restart your computer, it's really simple. Just go over to the start menu right here and click on your power icon and then push restart. By pushing restart here, what it's going to do is actually do a full and proper restart of your computer. Now, it's a good idea to do this, you know, maybe every week or so. You know, Windows ends up getting memory holes over time and those memory holes can actually cause to the system becoming unstable. So I typically recommend rebooting a Windows computer at least once a week. Most of these tips were pretty advanced. Some of them, <laughs> not so much. However, a lot of these tips can create substantial improvements to your performance. If you have bad memory or a bad hard drive, that could extremely affect your performance in Windows. So I would highly recommend getting those problems fixed as soon as possible. However, this bonus tip, it's, it's another low tech one. However, this one, 
not only can help your system's performance, but it can help your sanity as well. And that's disabling Windows tips and notifications. To be honest with you, these notifications drive me nuts. And typically it's always when I wanna click on the right hand bottom corner of the screen and it has notifications coming out constantly. So let me show you how to disable them. So what you wanna do is click down here on your notification area and then you wanna go up to manage notifications. And then from there, you have six different settings right here. I want you to go through and uncheck all six of these. And then once you do that, go ahead and turn notifications from apps off completely. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, then please like it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified of future videos. I post a new video every week. And hey, before you go, check out a couple of these videos. Have a great day.